Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. So I got an exciting one today. So I'm out here uh, hand sanding some blades for the next batch. Uh, well, actually, I'll show them to you right quick. We got some uh, some of the new EDC patterns, uh, a couple of neckers. Yeah, there's uh, four of the EDC patterns, uh, three of the knickers, uh, a couple of uh, pairing knives that um, had problems with the last uh, the last batch when I put the handles on, uh, cracked them or whatever. Some boning knives, and I think there's some fillet knives back there also. But anyways, that's not what the, the video is about today. The last the last video I shot was introducing I got a new pocket knife. You know, my last um, Victor and Knox pocket knife uh, was the Tinker. And I've been through, I don't know, I would guess somewhere around a half a dozen of those. Um, you know, when I first started carrying them, I, uh, I always put way too much torque on the, uh, the Phillips head screwdriver in the back, you know, with that T-handle right there. You can put a lot of torque and it typically, you know, break those or, you know, I'd wear them out scraping gaskets or, you know, cutting carpet or, or whatever, right? Well, lately I've been doing an awful lot of tree work, so I decided that I would um, uh, get the hiker, which has the little saw on there, right? Now, um, you know, I'm a knife maker, not a saw maker. And, but still, um, you know, I, I hate the idea of carrying a, a knife or a saw or something and not being able to sharpen it. Um, hey, y'all go fight over there. Hey, no, over there. Come on, hey, over there, come on. You're hitting the tripod. Labradors are crazy, aren't they? So, where was I? Oh yeah, so carrying a tool like a knife without being able to sharpen it is kind of on the, the odd side to me. I mean, that would be like, like buying a car with a full tank of gas and then when the tank of gas ran out, well then going and buying another new car, you know? I mean, <coughs> You know, you, you buy a car, you, you drive it until the tank gets to a quarter of a tank or so, and then you fill it back up, and then you drive it to a quarter of a tank. Well, it's the same thing with a, with a pocket knife, you know, with a blade. You know, you sharpen it up, you use it until it gets dull or almost dull, you sharpen it up again, you use it until it gets almost dull, and sharpen it back up again, right? Well, why can't we do the same thing with a saw? Now, I did not grow up with any... Uh, like fine finish carpenter types, okay? My grandfather would be about the closest uh, thing to a woodworker that I knew as, as a kid growing up. And I think, I don't really recall him doing like, uh, like building cabinets or furniture or anything like that, but I do recall him having a small shop in his backyard that was filled with saws, uh, a hard wheel grinder, uh, some drills, some other things like that. And he would build things occasionally and they would work. So I would, you know, consider him to be the closest thing to a carpenter that I knew of. I never once saw him sharpening a saw blade. Now whether he did just when I didn't see it, or maybe he did it and I just didn't notice it at the time or whatever. But I ended up, you know, I grew up, um, when you had a saw and the thing went dull, then, you know, you pretty much went and got another one. Um, you know, like saws like these, you know, like a carpenter saw. Now a hacksaw is, uh, I've never heard of anybody sharpening a hacksaw blade. At least not your normal, you know, your normal 24 tooth per inch hacksaw blades. I mean, everybody that I know of just takes these, uses them, and then when they get dull, you know, you throw them away. Or you use them for uh, shim stock or, you know, make other tools out of them. But nice saw blades like this, um, like I said, I mean, when I was a kid growing up, when, we, when these things went dull, we just threw them away and grabbed another one. Um, and then I found out I had uh, a couple of antique boning saws that I'd picked up at a flea market or something somewhere, and the blades were dull. And I looked around for new blades and I couldn't find any. So I get on the, you know, YouTube and Paul Sellers, Sellers or Selliers, one of the two, a um, uh, British fella, I think, he has got an excellent tutorial um, on YouTube about how to sharpen hand saws. 
um, with nothing but a file and what he calls a saw set, which is like a special pair of pliers that like offsets each tooth, which that's the style for, you know, like a, like a wood handsaw thing, right? So anyway, so I got this, uh, you know, hiker and it's got this saw blade on there. And I'm like, well, that's really cool. You know, I think that's going to be useful. But what do I do when it goes dull? You know, I mean, that's definitely not the same tooth pattern as what's on a carpenter's saw. And, you know, you hate to just, you know, never use it because you're afraid of dulling the thing. Because then once the thing is dull, it, you know, it's useless and you throw it away and get another one. So I thought, well, we're going to have to figure out how to sharpen these things. So I got on YouTube and I looked up sharpening these, these saw blades. And the only method that I saw on there was um, a little bit kind of a, a what I would consider like a touch-up, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the, the method that, that they suggested on that. I've got two of these saw blades. Um, this is a, an old one that I picked up at a pawn shop a long time ago. I've never really carried it because I don't really care for the corkscrew. Um, it catches on things and honestly, I don't really have a use for a corkscrew. Um, and the scissors, I think this one's got scissors, and yeah. And I honestly would never use those, and it's just uh, something else to make the thing, you know, a lot thicker. So anyway, so we're going to um, try some stuff out on both of these, because this one's a, a factory fresh edge. So we'll get to see what they look like fresh from the factory. Um, we'll do a couple of things to this one, and then uh, I'll actually show you um, how to cut a whole new tooth pattern like this. Um, just in case you really get it dull, right? Okay, so the premise of the whole idea is that you have one of these, right? And you use it, and it gets dull, and so now you need to sharpen it. So the method that I saw on YouTube is you just take a, a sharpening stone. We will, this is just a, a Norton Crystalline uh, Coarse Fine. You guys know me, that's one of my favorite stones out there, right? So we'll spread out some oil there. And when the saw blade gets dull and it no longer cuts, what the, the fellows were talking about doing was to just put it flat on a stone and then just abrade the side. Now we're gonna go at a pattern like this because of scratch patterns like this and that way you'll be able to see what we're doing. And we'll do this for a little bit here and then and then we'll stop and take a look. Okay, now of course you would do that on both sides. Ah. And this one was uh, a little on the dull side. Um, it was still cut, but it wasn't cutting, you know, super aggressively. Now you should be able to see, let me get around here so I can see it a little bit better. Our factory edge, or our factory finish, had scratch marks going this way, right? Then we put our scratch marks in going this way. So you can tell right off the bat that these teeth do not have any what they call set to them, okay? So they're not bent this way, and then this way, and then that way, and you know, an offset type of deal like a, like a carpenter saw has, okay? So sharpening on the side like that will kind of work. All right, now the problem that we're gonna have here is showing you, um, you know, the effects of, of, of each thing on, uh, on the, the real deal, right? Because it's so small, it's kinda tough to pick up in the camera. Hey, Wyatt, hang on a second. Wyatt, it's just the wind, buddy. Oh, that fan's going to work. I don't know if you guys can see it, but look outside there. See the windmill just, uh, I mean, it's just, it's about ready to take off. And the tarp over the, uh, um, the straw bale right there, the wind is just hitting it today. And so it's got the dogs kind of on edge. Hey, shh. Okay, so where were we? So pretty much what we did was we just flattened this, right? Now. What I did is I went ahead and to match this, uh, to 
match that tooth pattern and to learn how to sharpen it what I did was I went ahead and I played around with uh, a couple of different pieces of wood and a big triangle file and found out how to cut a whole new tooth pattern right so on this one you can see I have two teeth cut one here and one here this right here is just just the end which these saws they've got a flat spot at the very end and then they start off on teeth so this would be your flat spot and then first tooth and second tooth and then you can see there's no teeth here right so I cut these two particular teeth now I suppose I'll show you how to cut the next tooth let's see we're going to need to be on this side <clears throat> And all I've got here is a, a triangle. Um, it's a Nicholson Slim Taper triangle file. That's all it is. Um, so we got one tooth here, one tooth here. So we're going to cut the next tooth right here. All right. So what we're going to do is right where the end of this. I need a pencil. Okay. So right where the end of this is right here we're actually going to come inside that and cut our tooth right there okay just gonna um, leave the file um, uh, level you know we're not going to angle it this way or angle it this way we're just going to leave it level and then try to just eyeball there we go Now you can see what's happening here, right? This, uh, where'd my pencil go? Okay, this part right here is gonna is the future point of our tooth, right? And it's got a flat spot on top of it, okay? But you can see that this edge right here is being created already, all right? So we're just gonna keep filing this away until this flat spot disappears and turns into a point. And it won't take very long. Now, of course, you know, this is, uh, very rudimentary. You know, I'm sure this file isn't the right size of file to be cutting, uh, dang near a half inch wide saw blade. But you get the idea. Okay. Now you can see I'm a little bit off because you know I'm I'm cutting around the camera and everything. But you can see that comes to a point. Now it's not really even compared to this one, so we'll just go ahead and take a couple of strokes on this side and even it out. <coughs> I mean, I guess not that it really matters. I mean, this is a wood sawtooth. All right, now you can see that we cut our new tooth there, right? Okay, so now we have three teeth. Now we can <coughs> look at what happens. Now these are, well, I guess these would be considered burrs, you know, on, on your, your actual sawtooth there but you can see how this tooth has got I need another pencil one that's sharp preferably there we go okay so you can see how each tooth has got three edges on it all right you plus you so you got the point that cuts you got this edge right here which I would guess uh, whether that cuts or not, or maybe the point cuts down to about here or so, and then the rest of this just kind of clears chips, maybe, who knows. And then, you know, this sharp edge here and this sharp edge here, right? So when you're rubbing, uh, well, actually, let's just take a file, a flat file, a smooth one, 
okay and let's kind of knock the points off those ah. there okay so we knock the point off of this tooth here right okay now if you're just gonna be uh, you know sharpening the side of the blade like that There, that point is, a, you know, that dull spot is an awful lot less. You are sharpening this edge here and this edge here, and you are sharpening the point, but you're not ever going any deeper, all right? So I can see where that would, uh, you know, that would work for like a touch-up type of deal. Because if you keep doing that, now, now granted, you know, I mean, my last pocket knife I carried for well over 10 years right so if you're constantly carving on just or sharpening on just the sides then eventually you're gonna end up with a, a blade that's you know very very thin and it'll probably break uh, you know with any kind of lateral force because it's just so thin anymore right so you kind of want to wear it both ways you want to wear it in a little bit as you're wearing the teeth down okay so let's go back to our here so this right here to me is more of like a finishing type of deal or you know just a touch-up we still want to be able to cut these teeth you know down deeper as the saw wears otherwise you know your teeth hey Otherwise, your teeth just keep getting shorter and shorter and shorter and narrow and narrower. You know, it, it doesn't restore the actual tooth, all right? So, let's go ahead and show you what, uh, you know, sharpening these teeth look like uh, on the vise like this. So, let's go ahead and take our, uh, well, actually, let's take this and you can kind of see it a little bit more at different angles. Okay, so that's exactly what these teeth look like, only bigger so that you can see it, all right? So now let's go over actually sharpening the saw blade. Now that you know, or you can see what's going on, uh, well, you can kind of understand anyways, right? Okay, so this saw is actually, you know, it's not in all that bad a shape. We're going to make it a little bit nicer. Now I know you guys aren't going to be able to see it all that well because heck I even have to have reading glasses to look at it very well. Alright so um, here's one thing that I'm not too sure about and that is um, the size of the file right. This right here is the size of the file that I use on like that carpenter saw over there or um, like a bone saw that I use uh, you know working up um, uh, deer and antelope and elk and, and beef and such, right? Um, this size file right here is what I kind of like the best for uh, these little bitty blades here, right? And this one came in this set. It's a Nicholson premium four inch file set. All right, wood and metal plastic, general use, and this is just a very small triangle file. Slim taper, um, it is about four inches long and maybe a third of an inch across here a needle file it will fit in there a needle file will fit in between each of those teeth pretty well too but the problem with needle files is that even with the triangle ones they can tend to be a little bit flexible so pretty much you just find whatever file that you have that kind of matches the, uh, you know, so that when you lay that file in there and kind of wiggle it around to find the right angle, it matches that, that, uh, uh, you know, the the, two, the the space in between the teeth, all right? You can, if you want to, take a magic marker And go ahead and mark up your points and then when you don't see any magic marker on the points anymore then you know you're sharp right so let's go ahead and pick uh, a tooth kind of here in the middle so that you can see it is that in the camera yep 
Okay, now the nice thing about sharpening a uh, saw versus cutting, um, you know, cutting teeth in a piece of wood like that, or, you know, uh, cutting brand new teeth, is that, you know, your, uh, everything's already set. Your angles are already set, you know, there's already teeth there, so all you have to do is follow those, uh, those teeth and you'll keep getting them deeper and, and resharpen them. Okay, so we just lay that file in, we kind of feel and get the right angle to where everything kind of feels like it's contacting right, and then nice smooth strokes there. And I'm, my hand's a little bit too close to the camera. Uh, but that tooth right there looks really nice. I mean, it scraped off all the ink on one stroke, or two strokes. So now we'll go to the next tooth. Okay, now the next tooth. I don't know that it matters um, if you count the strokes or not. Um, I know on a chainsaw, it doesn't really seem to matter all that much. But I guess we can go ahead and do two strokes on every one of them just in case that does. Now you can see my hand as it gets farther away, um, the side of my hand is bumping into a portion of the tripod here. You have a half stroke on that one. And this one right here, that's about as far as I'm going to get. Let's go ahead and move you over. Maybe that's a good spot you can sit through the rest of them okay so now I can come back and I can see where the magic marker has been worn off now the whole um, and that was the end. Okay. Now the whole finishing grit, um, you know that, I honestly couldn't tell you. Um, you know, I, I know an awful lot of guys, if they sharpen something, if it's not sharpened to a mirror, then it's not sharp enough, right? And then you got guys like me that are like, hey, you know, hit the thing on a, you know, a 325, or at most maybe a four or 500 mostly, you know, grit for like a sharpening stone. And call it good. I really, honestly, I don't use a saw, a hand saw enough for like finish work to be able to tell you one way or another. on that one I believe the neighbors are building a, a, a pole barn and so between the wind and all the the trucks and everything over there I think that's what's driving the dogs just bonkers yeah now that feels just just really really sharp there so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is take a couple of strokes off of the the flat spot here at the end because if that if we don't take that down some, then this first couple of teeth won't be able to cut anything. Okay, so now that we got... Now we see no light reflecting anymore. And those points, boy, they are really sharp. But there are little burrs on the side. So let's go ahead and take that now to our stone. And we'll 
clean up one side with just a couple of strokes. Oh, that feels pretty good. Clean up that side with just a couple of strokes. Oh yeah. And we have got, I mean, look at that. That saw blade keeps catching uh, uh, the sides of the paper towel. So let's put that up and then it wouldn't be a good sharpening test if we didn't have something to cut with it, right? So we just got a chunk of one by there. Over here. And we'll see if it cuts. Oh yeah. really not bad I mean for a, uh, you know a dinky little pocket knife saw um, that actually just tore right through there and when you look up inside that uh, when you look at all your different well let's see I did kind of mess around with this right before we started Got a jeweler's loop here. Look at those teeth. How all the edges, none of them are reflecting light. All the points are really nice and sharp. You know, that's just a really good looking saw blade there. Or saw edge. I'm not really sure what the terminology is on these. But anyways, so like I said, when I was looking for So anyway, so you know when I was looking for a video to uh, Kind of help me figure out how to how to maintain these saw blades, you know I honestly couldn't find one all I all I saw was the whole you know rubbing you know sharpening the sides of the blade which again you know, that looks like a tune-up method, you know, where to get rid of burrs and stuff like that. But you won't actually deepen the, the teeth. So, you know, over time, I mean, fairly quickly, I would guess, <clears throat> I mean, I would guess over, like, say, six sharpenings, you know, which, you know, depends on how much you use something like this. I would guess right now that, um, you know, not having carried one of these, that six sharpenings would probably get me through an entire year. Um, these these do seem to be uh, fairly good saws I mean I just made that cut right there and it didn't slow that saw down one bit so you know maybe three sharpenings is enough for a year but I would guess over maybe oh uh, you know the maybe of the, over the course of say ten sharpenings you know your teeth there's not going to be very much left of them if you only sharpen from the sides um, and it might be one of those that you know, I might use this, well, use this particular one right here. You know, I might use it throughout the year and, you know, sharpen the sides, uh, you know, two or three times. And then once a year or once every other year, come back in and, and uh, you know, dress up the actual teeth. And then the next year or two, you know, be able to get along with just, you know, dressing up the sides. I don't know. I haven't carried one of these long enough to find out. But I will say that on any other saw, like a carpenter saw, you just sharpen with a file, and then, um, now on those, like a carpenter saw, you sharpen each tooth, a little bit different than what I showed you there, and then you come back with a saw set, and then you uh, bend each opposite tooth out the other way, right? You don't tune it up with a, a sharpening stone. Um, but anyways, uh, so that's the way I'm going to start taking care of the, the saw blade on my new pocket knife. Um, if you guys are interested, um, I would 
I would go over and check out, like I said, I think it was Paul Sellers. Um, if I think about it, I'll, I'll try to put a link in the description uh, to his videos. Um, but he's a pretty big YouTuber. I want to, you know, one of the guys that's got like a gazillion subscribers, you know, not like, you know, small time guys like I am. Um, very professional videos and um, really makes sharpening saw blades uh, uh, clear and, you know, way cool. Um, but he doesn't cover these little Swiss Army pocket knives either. So, um, that's about it. So again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video. I know I enjoyed playing around in the shop, learning how to sharpen these things up this morning. And um, we will see you next time.